Poor man doesn't have a textbook. I do. Oh, you got one. You got a new one now. Ho, ho, ho. Right. So let's go to analytical geometry. Hey, that textbook I gave you is actually the school's textbook, huh? I know. So you have to give me another one. Right. Now look here. Analytical geometry. So what basically analytical geometry had to do is revision of grade 10 concepts, which we did. Distance uh, between two points, midpoint, if you know how to work at midpoint, and we worked at the gradient of a line. Then we, they just gave you examples about it. We know how to do that. What else was the hard part? Right, parallel and perpendicular lines. What do we know about parallel and perpendicular lines? All right, look at this question five. This question five was basically what um, the last question we did now, 2.6 was about, where you had to go and work out the, the line of this and you had to work at the midpoint. So this is a very good question to go over again. If you're page 66. Page 66, number five was very good to go over again. Right, now remember, parallel lines mean they have the same gradient. Perpendicular lines mean they have uh, the gradient times each other will give me minus one. You're supposed to know all of this. How do you know if something is collinear? What does some collinear mean? Co right, collinear means you have three lines, uh, three dots. And they want to know if those three dots make a straight line. So how would you know if they make a straight line? Number one, if all the x values are the same, it's a straight line. Write that down because I think you all forgot about that. If you have three points and they say work out if it's collinear, if all three coordinates have the same x value, then it's a straight line. If all three um, points have the same y value, then it's a straight line. If or, they have points, work out the yeah, if they don't have the same points, then you need to work out the gradient between all three points. So if I have A, B, C, I work out the gradient of A, B, I work out the gradient of B, C, I work out the gradient of A, C. And I see if all three of them are equal to each other, then therefore it's a straight line. They are collinear points. Collinear points. Three. Yeah, one of the three. Co linear points. So all three points make a straight line. Right. Linear no, means straight, the, isn't it? Right. If all the x values are the same, then it's a straight line. Mm -hmm. If all the y values are the same, then it's a straight line. But if the x values are not the same and the y values are not the same, then you need to work at gradient between the points. And then if all points are, the gradient are the same, then it's uh, collinear. That's a very important question, right? Next, uh, inclination of a line. So inclination of a line was basically what I was teaching you about or taught you. Now what, at the bottom page 68 is very important. It's talking about the positive slope and the negative slope. So you remember how to work it out, right? Then you go to, if you go to page 70, example number seven, if you had to block the page and do it on your own, they like to ask the triangle upside down like this also. So you can see what is in relation B, A, and uh, theta are in what relation? Beta, alpha, and theta is in what relation? Beta is the exterior angle of those two. So those two added together will give me beta. So they said work out alpha. How would I work out alpha? I would have worked out beta. I would have worked out theta, and I would have said beta minus theta would have given me alpha. Now, how I couldn't have worked at alpha straight away because is alpha an angle on the x-axis? No. Because it's not an angle on the x-axis, I can't use inclination of a line for alpha. That's where many people go wrong. They just start finding, they find the gradient of this line here, and then they say, no, alpha is exactly the same. No, it's not. Okay. Right. Uh, if you do exercise four, it's again, we did it in class, and we also checked our work. It also just reinforces the whole of inclination of a line. Right. Also that, uh, I remember doing this on the board with you all many times. I did it with you twice. This is very important. They love to ask you to give the equation of a straight line. So remember, the equation of a straight line, To whenever you have to work out the equation of the straight line, you can use y is equal to mx plus c. When would you use y is equal to mx plus c? If you can work out the gradient or if you have the y-intercept. So if you have the y-intercept and you have the gradient, you'll use it. Or if you have, yeah, that's the best one. Then if you have number B, if you have two points, I will use Y minus Y1 is equal to M open brackets X minus X1. If you have two points or if you have a gradient and one point. In your notebook, page, uh, paper two book, the first page has it all written down there. I remember doing it with you all, right? This is when you have the X intercept and the Y intercept. 
Now, x is a number and y is, an, uh, is a number is when you have a vertical line or a horizontal line, right? Those are those ones there. So you need to remember, they always like to ask you to give the equation of the line. Uh, what else? Exercise 5 is basically putting everything all together. Exercise 6 is talking about perpendicular and parallel and equation of the lines. When you say intersecting lines, what happens to intersecting lines? Right, you let them equal to each other. When you let them equal to each other, then you can work out point P. So look what they did now. They gave you the equation of FG, but they never give you the equation of AB. They gave you two points. So what you had to do first, you had to work out the equation of AB and then let them equal to each other, and that's how you have gotten P. They never give you the equation of AB. You had to find it. Because remember, when you find a point of intersection, you need the equation of one, the equation of other, let them equal to each other, and then you solve for x. When you get the x value, you substitute it into one of them, and you get the y value. Capish? Yeah. That's the whole of analytic. Oh, how does it apply to quadrilaterals? Now, they could give you a quadrilateral and ask analytical about it. So you need to know the properties of all your quadrilaterals. So page 76, 77 are the... Uh, properties of a quadrilateral, okay? Uh, because, oh yeah, so in the paper they'll tell you, prove through analytical methods that this parallelogram is a rhombus. So you first have to know that what, what makes a rhombus? All four sides are equal. Oh, opposite angles are equal. Or things like that. So you have to be like, oh, all four sides are equal. Maybe I can work out the length of all the sides. If all the sides are the same, it's a rhombus. You know, that type of thing. Etc. Right. Any other questions about analytical? No. Can I move away from you now? No. You're fine. For sure. Yeah. For sure, sure. Right. Next. Next. What? You wanna have a break? Yeah. Right. Uh -huh.